Here at eFix, we love an LED, and now we've got one inside our consumer unit. We're going to be looking at art fault detection devices. In North America, they've been using art fault detection for more than 20 years. And we're going to look at, in this presentation, the single module art fault detection device by Wilex. So let's see what all the fuss is about. So let's first consider where we've come from and where we're going to. So this consumer unit here is made of wood, a combustible material. It's also probably coated in a lacquer that is even more combustible than the consumer unit itself. It has no tool or key in order to enter it. And when I open up the enclosure, we have no protective bar. So there's no CPC bar. There's no means of isolation built within the consumer unit. As I pull out an overcurrent protection device, it has an asbestos pad and a piece of copper wire, which is smaller than the conductor in circuit. And when there's a fault, we hope this wire melts before the one in circuit. That's where we were, and this is where we're going to. So we'll all agree that this consumer unit wouldn't offer the level of protection that we expect in a modern installation. So this single module art fault detection device incorporates the technology behind a circuit breaker, also the technology behind the RCBO, so earth leakage protection, but also protection from arcs, both series and parallel arcs. Now we can think of a parallel arc between two conductors and we can envisage that one. It's the series arc. Well, is it two conductors in a cable that have broken and are now very close to each other and arc in between them? It could be, but I think the easier way to look at a serial arc is a conductor inside a termination that isn't tight and actually bouncing between the actual connection, creating an arc, therefore a serial arc. And we can argue over time with the introduction of things like torque screwdrivers, etc., that we should have overcome perhaps the lack of tightness or over tightness of conductors that could lead to serial arcs. However, we know in the real world that's not always the case and this device will protect against that. So let's take a closer look at this by fitting it in the consumer unit behind me. We're going to fit the B3230 milliamp AFDD RCBO. If I drop down the mechanism, you can see it's an A-type. There's some other nice features about it. They also make them in ampere ratings of 6, 10, 13, 16, 20, 25, 32 and 40 amps. It also has the no miss bus bar technology built into it. So as I tighten this up, you can't miss the actual connections below here, as well as the quick release mechanism. So in other words, we don't need to take this bar out in order to fit our breaker. We're used to this section here clipping onto our DIN rail at the back. So all we do is pull this clip forward and click it into position. So that's held forward if I just drop it off. So you can pull it forward. You can now see that that mechanism has dropped down. So allowing me to fit it straight onto the bar without removing it. So move the conductors out of the way like so and let's just drop that into position push the clip back and now we can just tighten up our screws here and insert our conductors as well as our neutral fly lead so pop my conductors into my AFDD I've confirmed with a torque screwdriver the torque settings of both the conductors the connection to the bus bar as well as the neutral bar just to prove this is a flex here this is actually on a plug top this is a demo board for video purposes only Next, let's talk about the actual art fault detection device itself. It will not operate when there's a spark. So when you open and close a switch, dim a circuit, you can create sparks, but not arcs. And this device is not designed to detect those and operate. It will operate under art fault conditions, either serial or parallel. Parallel between conductors, maybe chewed by a rodent, or series ones, as we discussed previously, about maybe in a loose termination creating that arc. It needs to be of a certain duration at a certain waveform in order for it to operate. Very intelligent piece of kit. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to plug it in over there and we're going to have a look at the uh, LED here and then discuss the other patterns the LED can be in in order to tell you what type of fault you've actually had in your installation. So before this video is over, I'm going to show you this bit of kit here as well. This is the NM range of Wilex consumer units, and this bit of kit here makes electricians' life easier, and we like that in eFix, so stay on for that. So let's have first have a look at an unenergized AFDD. So if we just push it into that position with the circuits all off, so you've lost the power supply, you can see here that the uh, window itself has no light on. So in this case, no supply. Logical sense. Let's turn it back off, and let's energize it. And now we turn on the AFDD, 
and you've got a red LED light showing. So the circuit is healthy and correct with a red LED light in this window here, but can have other colors to denote other issues. So let's go through some of those. If this window here was not red, but a single pulsating yellow LED, that would be for a series or parallel arc detected. So if it was a double pulsating yellow LED light, it would be for over voltage. So it would be a voltage greater than 285 volts AC detected. A triple pulsating flashing yellow LED light is a residual current detected. So the RCBO um, element of the device is operated. If the light is going red, then yellow, red, then yellow, this means that there is a self-test failure. These devices self-test themselves every 15 hours. The requirements is that they should test themselves every 24, but Wilex deemed that to test it every 15 is better, meaning it's tested throughout the day at different parameters within circuits. If that test fails, this will flash red, then yellow, red, then yellow, and you're required to call an electrical engineer in. The electronics in here have failed and it needs replacing. In order to carry out the functional test, it's exactly the same as you would do on a standard RCBO by pressing the test button under here, but this time obviously it's illuminated. So you simply press the test button there. That will test both the RCBO and AFDD elements of the actual device itself. Let's imagine we wanted to have a fully isolated board or just one circuit. Comes back to this little bit here that I talked about earlier on. So we've got all the board de-energized. Take off this flap like so. Make sure you keep that. Take this piece here, this handy little piece here, and it's gonna come under the back part of the lip itself of the lid. So I just lift it up, just slide it under there like so. I line it back up, and now I take my padlock and sign. So I take my sign, take my padlock, and we go through there like there, and then drop it into the hook. Remembering to keep the key in your pocket. And now I've actually secured the isolation of the entire consumer unit. I really, really like that. Just one thing is just to keep hold of that. You don't want to be looking for that at some point. So I've got my Matrel 3152 multifunction tester out because it leads me into the next great feature of the AFDD. It's two pole. So in other words, when I operate the mechanism, it disconnects both line and neutral. Therefore, when carrying out your insulation resistance test from the top of the device, it means you won't pass that high voltage back through the electronic components within the device itself. So we can see that this AFDD will offer protection against serial and parallel arcs, reducing the risk of fires. It offers earth leakage protection in the form of the RCBO that's built within it, as well as short circuit and overcurrent protection from the technology behind a circuit breaker. Our friends over the pond have had this type of technology in their electrical installations for almost 20 years. I'd be really interested in your comments on whether the AFDD is where we're going next in the UK. So please make sure you comment down below.